Hey, my name is Max. Welcome back to part four of this tutorial series on using Gulp for modern web development workflow. In this video, I'll show you how you can compile SAS to CSS with Gulp in just about five lines of code. We'll also do some refactoring in the Gulp file in the process, just to keep things clean. Okay, let's get going. So first, we need a Gulp plugin called Gulp SAS. So we'll install that and save it to our dev dependencies. Now we'll just proceed as usual. First we want to require our plugin. Then we'll create a new task for handling our SAS files. I like to build my style sheets into one single file, so I'll also choose a single file as an entry point. I'll just pipe that over to the SAS plugin. And this is the option to include source maps. Then when the plugin is done, it'll pass it over to our output folder, which is going to be at builds development CSS. All right, this looks good so far for our gulp file. Now let's create some SAS files to see if it works. First, I'll create our main entry point at source sas main.scss. For now, what we want to do set the text color for the entire document to red. We will define the color red inside a file called variables.scss. This way we can just demonstrate that the SAS includes work. Now going back to our main.scss file, we'll pull in that file, and then we'll change the hard-coded red CSS to the variable red that we just created in the variables.scss file. I'll switch over to the terminal and execute the sass task we just created by typing gulp sass. Going back to Sublime Text, we see that the CSS file was created and it looks just as expected. We have normal CSS and even source maps included. Now we'll just add this CSS file to our template. Then we'll head back to the terminal, execute the jade task again to recompile the template. Let's open our browser. And we see red text all around. And if we inspect the element, we can see that the source maps work just fine. OK, now let's enhance our gulp file a bit so we're a bit more flexible for the future. First thing I've noticed now that we have three tasks is every time we want to pipe whatever has been done to the output folder, we have to specify it. So why don't we just store the output folder in a variable? Now it'd be really cool if we would only include the source maps if we're compiling for development. And if we're compiling for production, why don't we minify our CSS? So here's what we'll do. Why don't we just create a config object and then just edit it if we need to. So if we're in the development environment, we'll set the source comments property of the config object to map to include the source maps. And to minify, we don't even need an extra plugin because Gulp SAS is already capable of that. So if we're in the production environment, we'll set the output style to compressed to minify the CSS. Now we'll just pass the config object over to the SAS plugin. Now let's do one more round of testing to make sure we didn't break anything and everything works. So we'll go ahead and delete the CSS file. Now let's head over to the terminal and run gulp sass in a development environment because that's the default. And the CSS file includes source maps and is not compressed. Now, if we set node env to production and run gulp sass again, 
heading over to our CSS file, we see that the CSS was minified. All right. Thank you very much for watching. As always, if you have any feedback, just leave a comment below. More videos are coming soon, so stay tuned. Subscribe to the YouTube channel or follow me on Twitter for that. And I'll see you again soon. Thanks again. Bye.